to the Friday Club Break Time with interview. This is a series of interviews that we send out every week as part of our the Friday Club newsletter and in which we discuss marketing and admissions challenges, successes, things to look forward to with the real pros in marketing and admissions in schools. This week I'm extremely privileged to be speaking with Stefan Chuga, Director of Marketing at Shrewsbury International School in Hong Kong. Stefan, welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. Hi Sophie, thank you for the invitation. I'm really, really pleased to have you here and I know that lots of people listening to this interview and reading our newsletters will be really interested in what you're doing at Shrewsbury International, um, what your past experiences are. So Stefan, you are the Director of Marketing at Shrewsbury International in Hong Kong. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and your current role? Yes, sure. Um, so as you might hear from my accent, I, I'm not a native English speaker. I'm coming from Germany and uh, I came to Hong Kong back in 2008. So I have been living here for 13 years and uh, I've spent most of my career in marketing. Um, initially, I... I started off with digital marketing. So I was focusing on websites, social media, email marketing, search engine optimization. Um, in the past six to seven years, I moved up a little bit to more like um, generic marketing roles and also more in leadership roles. Um, so working with teams, um, building teams, uh, making sure that everyone uh, has, has all the tools that he needs. And um, also for the past six years, I have been working in international education, um, which I find quite interesting. Um, before that, I worked in different fields, uh, including hospitality, uh, F&B, um, toys, action sports. But I think I really found my, my home working in the international education industry. And um, yeah, today I have been with, actually today is my, it's my second anniversary being with Shrewsbury. And wow. um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Time flies, really. And um, also as a background a little bit, um, I also have a son, he's five years old, and he's also um, a Shrewsbury kid. And um, in fact, he will, he will join primary school year one on, on Monday, coming Monday. So we are very excited. That's very exciting time for him there, and I hope it goes well for him. Yes. So you must be a real, you're a real advocate for the school then, if your child goes there. Yes, I am. I'm really um, very passionate about. It. Yes, also my free yeah. time. I, um, I mean, we we meet another a lot of other like young families, and um, of course, I always try to uh, tell them how great our school is. <laughs> yes. What is it about Shrewsbury in Hong Kong that you find so great out of interest, Stefan? Um, I think it's it's um, it's first it's uh, we. We really focus on primary school education, which is quite rare. Um, whereas many other schools, they, they have a through train system, so they also have a secondary school. Um, but for us, um, the whole building and, and the whole curriculum and all teachers and everyone involved is, is really um, focusing on little children. Um, so all our children, no matter the age group, even the very little ones, we start at three years um, when they come to nursery, um, they already will join uh, the swimming classes, so they can go to our pool. Um, they will do choral lessons. Uh, they can use our gym or the sports, uh, the sports grounds. Um, so everything can be used from day one. Whereas in other schools, um, it's it's mostly very often it's reserved for the older students, or um, they spend more more money and time and um, um, just more people available for secondary school students. But here from day one. Um, you can engage and uh, can do everything you want on the campus. And also, I think the, the nice thing is also that you don't have to leave the campus. So everything you do, including swimming, sports, music, everything happens on campus. Um, so we, we offer a full day program for all our students from eight to three, and they don't have to leave the campus. They can do everything here. Uh, we all have lunch together. And also in the afternoon, we also offer extracurricular activities. So uh, it can be a full day from 8 a.m. in the morning until 4.30 in the evening. And, but not only the, the, the hard facts, but what I also really like here is um, the management. Um, we, we are not a franchise of uh, Shrewsbury. We are, we are working together. We are very closely affiliated with Shrewsbury in the, in the UK. And we have a direct reporting line to the Board of Governors from the UK. Um, and this is reflected in, in, in how the school operates and how we all work together. 
and um, we we have something we call it the Shrewsbury Sparkle. Um, so this is something that um, I think really, um, when you come to the campus, you really feel how how nice and how warm it actually is, and how how engaged all the people are. And um, that's why I think Shrewsbury is probably yeah, the best school in Hong Kong. It sounds amazing. So you said there that you, you've been in post for two years today. So happy work anniversary. But Thank I know you. that you've worked in other schools in Hong Kong and global, globally prior to Shrewsbury. Can you tell us a bit more about what the private and international school scene looks like in Hong Kong specifically? Are there any trends that are specific to Hong Kong, for example? Yes, yeah, so I worked um, I work for a school group called Yuchung Education Foundation. I, I work mm. with them for almost four years and for, for them I work in a regional role. So I look after our schools in Hong Kong and China. Um, then I, I went on to a, to a, to a preschool startup called uh, Kido, K-I-D-O, and they focus on, on preschool education for children from once they can walk basically from six months um, to six years. And uh, this was a global role. So I was a global head of marketing, um, looking after different markets, including Dubai, India, the US and the UK. And um, I think I have a really good bird's eye overview of different areas. And now with my current job, I, what I also really like about it is I'm based on the campus. Um, so we're not sitting somewhere in, in an office somewhere in the, in, the, in the CBD, but we're really actually very close to what's happening. Um, the principal is just, uh, just two meter away from me. Um, so we really know what's going on. We really have first-hand insights. Um, and sorry, I forgot your question. <laughs> sorry. Um, for me, like, of course, I'm in the UK and we've not had a guest yet from a school in Hong Kong. And ah, yes, okay, yes, yeah, yes. I'm wondering if there are any, anything, any patterns that you see to do with education specifically in Hong Kong that, that come to mind for you? Yeah, good point. Okay, now, now, I, I, now I recall. Um, <laughs> okay. I think I was talking a little bit about too much about myself. So Hong Kong is actually, I think it's, it's a very interesting market um, because it's, it's one of the most mature markets in, in Asia um, in comparison with all the other markets, including China, Thailand, Philippines, Japan, Vietnam. Um, it's a very uh, sophisticated market. Um, and I think, International schools have been around here for a long time. And um, also the, the main difference to other, other countries, for example, I know in China and Singapore, um, actually local, the locals are not allowed to attend international schools. Um, whereas here in Hong Kong, um, of course, there's an, there's a, there's an allocation, but also local, uh, local students, local families actually allowed um, to access an international school. And I think also, if you look at the, the, the city itself, Hong Kong, if you just look at the topography, um, it's, it's easy to, to go around. It's, it's, um, transportation is great, um, distances are not really far. Um, so you, you have access to many international schools. I believe if you live in another bigger city, probably like London, you probably will not go from, from east to west or from north to south. But in Hong Kong, uh, many students they actually travel from one side to the other. And everything can be achieved within one hour, one way. Um, and I, what I also really like about Hong Kong, especially in the past few years, um, international schools and private schools have become much more um, professional. Um, this is mainly due to the fact that there were a lot of newcomers actually to the market. In fact, in the past four to five years, there are probably around 10 to 12 new schools just in Hong Kong um, to an already very saturated market. Um, so all the older players, so they also had to step up their game. Um, they had to do more marketing. And we can see that many of the established schools, they also do advertising now on Google, on Facebook, and they offer webinars, and they're getting more approachable. Um, and I think this is very interesting, especially as a marketer, to, um, yeah, to, to, to compete with them, to try to be better, to uh, uh, stand out from the noise. There's a lot of noise now, definitely. Um, and also it has very much changed from a, from a I would say more like um, Caucasian expert driven um, bubble to a very diverse um, student population. Um, as you might have remembered, maybe in, in the late nineties, early two thousands, um, families were sent here and they got a pretty good package, uh, including the, the, the school fees. 
but this has uh, has uh, vanished actually quite a lot. So um, just a very small percentage of our student population is is, is getting paid by the employer. So these days, um, families are doing their own research. They they usually pay for the for the provision, and they are getting more more demanding, and uh, they have much more much more choice on hand. And also, what I noticed in the past two to two years. Um, we had a couple of of schools opening, which um, I would call like a no frills approach. Um, so they don't have all these flashy um, like campuses with uh, swimming pools and auditoriums. Some of them open up in a shopping center, um, but what they offer is, is quality international education, um, but at, at a much more interesting price point than than the traditional international schools. And um, yeah, I mean the market at the moment because of COVID and, and, and political issues is, is a bit, it's, it's difficult. I, I know and I heard that many schools in fact have lost students or they have a smaller student body now than let's say two years ago. Um, but for Shrewsbury, we, have, we are still growing, um, not as much as we were hoping for, but we're still growing and we have a very, a very supportive community. And um, yeah, it's a very mature and it's a very saturated market. Sounds like lots of changes are happening in the market there in Hong Kong. What do yes. you think parents are looking for in, when they're selecting a school for their children? I think if we talk about um, different age groups, so I, I was a parent myself. I, my, my son is five years old now, and um, I, didn't, I didn't have much knowledge about when, when he was born or when he was one year old, like what would be good for him, what, what would fit us, how far could, should we be able to travel? And um, I think most most parents in Hong Kong they 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 first listen to to their friends and, and family members who might not who also might not know everything, um, but they feel a little bit lost. They feel overwhelmed with with the, with the um, I mean you have the British curriculum, you have the American curriculum, you have uh, Singapore International School, French International School, German International School, then you have uh, Montessori. Um, so, so um, many parents are overwhelmed. They're definitely overwhelmed, and um, they they then start to 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 do their research. And uh, many are really really biased um, by 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 the comments from from their from their very close uh, family members and and uh, and friends. And um, and also, what we realize is that, especially the local population, they they look like a, a one size fits all mostly. So they would like to to start. In the kindergarten and then um, have a school that goes all the way up to secondary school so there's always a lot of um, work that we have to have to undertake to convince potential parents that we are also a suitable solution for them um yeah i think this is this is how we can summarize it at the moment I mean, there are probably not a few other factors but these are the two main main drivers that we can see and also i mean the older this, the the parents get, and the the, the the longer the students are in the in the in the school system, the the more the smarter they get, the more knowledgeable. Um, it's it's really just in the beginning, the first I would say two to five years, where parents really really uh, really have no idea what, what to do, um, where we can be of a, of assistance. But the older the students get, um, I mean, we also attend a couple of school fairs here in Hong Kong. And mostly, I mean, we won't we won't see any students uh, in secondary school looking for a new school on a school fair. So everything happens at the very young age. Really. Okay, it's really interesting. Thank you, Stefan. And you've talked a little bit there, and I know this is a topic that's really important to you. But you've talked a little bit there about parent advocacy. Could you tell us a little bit more about what that means to you and what that means in your role at Shrewsbury? Yes, I think advocacy has been. Um, yeah, one of the buzzwords probably in education, but it's it's actually quite quite old fashioned. It's a very, um, it's it's it's. I mean, it has been there for a long time, and it's. And if if you if you if you if you have the definition, it's it's called. A, so you have to read it. A public support for or recommendation of a particular cause or policy. Um, so advocacy sets in when. When parents are satisfied with what they what they are offered, with with what they're consuming, with um, let's say if they if they bought a car and then they really like the car, then they will tell their friends, hey, this car is really nice. Um, and this also is is is, is reflected in, in international education, and I think even more because um, 
making your decision to join a school it's a big decision um, it's first it's very costly it's um most very often it's, it's really intangible so it's hard to actually within a couple of months to figure out okay is my student now is my child now much a much better person or would have been a much better person if it went to school b and uh, very often it also means that um families are moving from district to district so it's um and they also depends where they will work and it's a big big decision and if you have someone in your network uh, if you know another family um, who is happy with the, with the school that they are attending at the moment, then um, of course you, you would then also trust the school more in the beginning. And then also when you, when you then come to visit us, and if you then see that actually what, what this parent shared with you is, is, is true, or you even feel even, even better being at the school, then this definitely helps. And um, as I said earlier, so my son is also attending the school and, and this helps me also to, 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 to see both sides. So they, the promotional side, yeah, we are the greatest, but also seeing my, my, yeah, my little boy really flourishing, happy, uh, talking about the school, um, really waking up in the morning, cannot wait to go to school, even though he has to wake up very early. And then also um, meeting other families in a similar situation. I mean, here in Hong Kong, it's also quite, quite special because we have many uh, mixed families, many mixed culture families. Uh, my, my wife is from Hong Kong, so my son is... Um, somewhere yeah he's hong kongese but he's also german and he, he speaks four languages fluent now yeah, german english cantonese and mandarin and um yeah just to be close I, I still think that sure you can do a lot of digital and uh, you can tell everyone how great you are you can have the best targeting options but it's 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 the, the very old school as uh, sitting together in, in a restaurant and then sharing your your experience with, with, a, with a product or service yeah. amazing it's really really cool so in your role, and I guess you see this with two hats on, one as a dad and one as director of marketing, but how do you think schools can encourage that advocacy with other parents? I, I think there are two sides. First, of course, they, they, they have to deliver a great service. Um, sure, you can market a product, but if, it, if it's not what people expect or if, 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 if it's just not a good product, then even the best marketing doesn't help. Um, and that's why um, we also, we, we just had our induction, uh, induction session this morning for the newcomers and new teachers. And that's why we always tell them that um, we are all marketers. We are all in this together. So um, you're not just a teacher, um, but you're also someone to, to, to promote the school. To, um, you're highly visible. We have a lot of parents walking in and out for tours. And um, they, need, they need to make sure that they look sharp. Um, the students... Uh, are well dressed they, they have their uniforms correctly their ties um that everything looks tidy i mean not sterile but tidy um and i think the other thing is also like to to um so this is the, the product itself so make sure the product itself is, is great and it, it looks like on the ads um, but the other side is also to um to actively um engage parents and actively actually just ask them so could you please help us if you're satisfied with our product if you're satisfied with the school can you please also share it with with other people uh, with with your friends with your families um so there's no payment involved no gifts no commission it's really just if you if you from your heart feel happy and comfortable about it then please please get the voice out this is very helpful Really. And I think that's one of the really nice things about education. It's not a competitive thing. If you think, wow, this experience for my child is amazing. Of course, I want to tell other people about it so that they can have that for their children as well. So yes. it's really powerful. Yes. Thank you. So, Stefan, you have you joined Shrewsbury International School in Hong Kong just before COVID hit us. How have you adapted to running a school's marketing during a pandemic? Um, yeah, personally, I, I was devastated um, yeah. because my son joined the school um, in yeah, early January after the Christmas break. And then he could just stay on campus for three weeks. And then we had the first Corona case in Hong Kong. And I think a day or two later, then all schools were closed. Um, so personally, it was it was really bad for me. So I really didn't like it. Um, but then, if you think about the school, 
because in fact, um, you probably have, have heard of the protests back in 2019, where we also had a couple of days which, which uh, stu where students could not come to the campus. And these were the first times and days where we actually could try and set up our online learning system. And um, this in fact came very handy because once Corona really kicked in, um, we had already all the infrastructure ready um, and we could pretty much switch it on from one day to the other. Um, sure, there were still some, some issues in the beginning, but then over the weeks and months, we then fine tuned more and more. We also um, uh, encourage our parents to, to give us a feedback. We send several surveys to them, um, ask them what, what is the best way to deliver because you have, uh, usually you have like two, two kind of, of parents. What, one kind of parent would like to have everything live, like we talk now, it's live. Whereas the other parents think, especially those with, with several children, or can we please have better have recorded sessions so we can fit it better into our schedule. Um, so I think we eventually we strike the balance quite well. So we had two or three live sessions every day and, and three or four recorded sessions. And also what we also did, we um, initially we, because we did, no one really knew what COVID was and what it's all about. And then we asked our, all our teachers to stay home and, and do, the, um, do the teaching from home. But there were a lot of issues um, for safeguarding. Um, secondly, sometimes very unstable internet connection. So we then asked them all to come back. So everyone was sitting in their, in their classroom. So it also looked much more professional. They also felt better to teach. They had a much better su su support network. And then this worked very well. And then, um, I mean, we had a lot of um, like full day online. Then I remember we, we could come back for a full day provision, but then another wave kicked in. Then we had to back, go back online, online only for a couple of weeks. And then the government allowed us to have it like a half day or every other day. And then for a couple of months now, um, we're actually back to full day. Um, so it was quite a lot of um, up and downs and also for our teaching team. I mean, um, many of them are from, from the UK. Yeah, most of them actually from the UK. It was the first time outside, um, so far away from the family. Um, yeah, they, they felt quite isolated because also here it's, it's, a, it's a nice community. If you're on the campus, you, you meet many like-minded people. It's, it's, very, it's very energetic, um, but staying at home for the whole time, this was definitely a huge shock for, for many, many of, our, of, our of our teachers. And sure, of course, of course, also for the students, especially for the younger ones. I mean, um, Usually as a mom or dad, you don't want them to spend too, so, so much time on, on a screen, on front of a screen, but this is what Zoom does. It's, it, it's, it's only working on a screen. Um, but I think eventually we, and also teachers became very creative about um, activities um, for them to do offline, like um, I don't know, building something or creating something or, or write something or sing something, which would then get them a little bit away from the screen. and. Um, I think overall, I think we 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 did pretty well, and uh, I mean we also have I mean we have great facilities. Our internet is very strong, and we had everything was pretty much set up. Um, but everyone was, of course, everyone would like to be to continue teaching on uh, offline on campus, because this is especially for the for the younger ones. I mean, this is it's not only about acquiring uh, like being able to count from one to ten or be able to write but especially for the younger ones it's, it's to, to socialize to 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 see what others are doing and to learn like the the, the life itself yeah sounds like you've done really really well then stefan i think so, okay okay yeah, yeah great job and um, one of the things that we found really interesting when we first started talking with you stefan is that you have set up a pop-up photography exhibition downtown in hong kong can you tell us a bit more about that, please, and how you came up with the idea? Okay, so um, first of all, it, it was not my idea or it was not, I think it was more like a, like a common brainstorming with, with, yeah. uh, with the marketing team, the admissions team, our principal, and we had several ideas. Um, so one of the first ideas was, um, so maybe I'll let me go a little bit back. So we, were, we, we are here, Actually, our, our, our campus is a little bit in the outskirts of Hong Kong. Um, so it's not, it's not, I mean, it's sure it's easily accessible, but, but especially for working parents, it's much, it's, it might be a little bit of a hassle to come out. And um, we were given the chance to, to have a, um, a vacant office space in Central in downtown Hong Kong for a couple of weeks. 
and then we thought okay what could we do with the space it was uh, just um um it was just um the tenants moved out and then it, it wasn't very fancy or very nice office but we just had to figure out what can we do with it so then we thought um maybe maybe we have a, a like a satellite office like a satellite admissions office where um prospective parents could visit us in, in in this office building rather than coming to 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 the outskirts of hong kong to our campus but then we also thought um this this will really limit the the the, the amount of people who could come there and maybe let's let's open up a little bit and um um, have like an event series where we give um, like very generic advice to to parents, like um, how to select a school in, in, in for your for your primary age child. And then our colleagues, including uh, our principal, uh, the admissions team, they then gave some talks to parents. And then within a couple of days or maybe a week, we 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 cleaned up, we we painted, and we we set up a like a like a photo exhibition. So we took um. Um, we had four themes, and based on the themes, we created a photo gallery um, in the space. It was a good-sized office, 2,500 square feet, and um, then we had a. We were running it for four days. The 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 the, the, the Wednesday was um, like we invited our media partners, uh, relocation agents, um, just to say, okay, the photography exhibition is open now. Uh, we had a couple of drinks and. Um, for the other three days, we we delivered um, information sessions, and of course, it was also open to to anyone to to enjoy the photography exhibition. And um, the feedback, I think, it was in general, it was okay, and I think we delivered well, but um, giving a, some constraints. Uh, the 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 um, which we then also analyzed afterwards is um, that the 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 number of registrations were quite low. Um, and uh, we probably could have done more, but just given the the, the, the short time, um, it was okay. But we might have the space for another series of events, and then I think we will we will really um, really use it to the max, and then I think we will really rock it. Yeah, yeah it sounds really in innovative and really different to perhaps what other schools might be doing. It sounds quite yeah. unique to Shrewsbury. Yeah. Yes, yes. Really convenient for parents. Thank you for telling us about that. Just before our break time's over then, Stefan, one question that I really like to ask our guests is what is your favorite thing about working in schools marketing? Um, so I think in general, I'm, I'm a marketer. So if you if you cut me, I will blood marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I will bleed marketing. Uh, I, I have done for my whole life. Um, and I really enjoy the, um, the diversity of marketing in general. So you have to be creative which some might say I'm not too creative, but fine. Uh, you have to be a numbers man, or you have to you have to know your numbers. Uh, you have to communicate well. Um, you have to find the essence of each product. So you have to be able to 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 find the best things of each product and then visualize it and, and sell it. And um, marketing is always changing, especially digital marketing, as you might have noticed over the past 10, 15 years, it's completely exploded, basically. Uh, with the introduction of the internet to to everyone um and what i like about schools marketing or international schools marketing is just um first as, as the name says it's very international it's very diverse it's um so you meet people from from all over the world um you meet different from people from different cultures different age groups but also for me as a foreigner in hong kong of course it's it's a very nice environment working in an english speaking environment where most of the people really speak english as their first language and it's it's quite warm it's um and it's also it's um it, it's it's a nice environment and um also when since i'm now based on the campus it's um yeah every day is, is different uh, it's it's not it's not this typical nine to five corporate uh, office job it's um Sure, I can plan ahead a little bit in advance, but usually all my plans, my plans get derailed, and then I, the, the the day ends up with something completely different. And because they're especially during school term, there's so many things happening on campus. Um, yeah, it's yeah, that's what I like about it. And I love hearing you say that you get to meet so many different people, and it's such a nice community. I definitely feel that, um, and I definitely feel that today, having spoken to you this morning, Stefan. Thank you so, so much for joining us. This was a really good conversation, really interesting and insightful. And we're super grateful to have your insight and expertise on the Friday Club. 
Great, my pleasure. Thank you, Sophie. Right.